John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the most misinterpreted scripture in the entire Bible. John 3.16 alone has deceived billions of people and more people have been deceived by this verse than any other verse in the entire Bible. This is the foundation of Christianity. It lies on this verse of telling people that John 3.16 is saying that God loves every single person in the entire earth. And that's simply not true at all when you read and study the Bible. That's not true. So it's class time right now, and it's time to put emotions to the side because this lecture is going to rock some boats. Understanding the truth is going to be hard for a lot of people to digest, but it's time for class, and now we're going to have to put emotions to the side, and we're going to have to use common sense now. Put religion to the side, and we're going to go on a scholastic level and find out exactly what the Bible is saying, what God is saying. We're going to have to use ratiocination to break down John 3.16. And after this lesson, you're going to find out that this is a very basic scripture when you come into this knowledge. John 3.16 is very easy to break down and to find out exactly what it's saying. So with that, I'm Brother Yerushalam. This is the Bible Unlocked, the John 3.16 Deception. John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. See, now when people see the word world, what they automatically do is interpolate and insert their own definition of what this word world means. They automatically say, see, this is saying God loves all the people in the world. When there's over 16, 17 definitions of the word world. And in the Bible, it clearly tells you that there's more than one world in the Bible. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, plural, worlds, plural, with an S at the end of it, telling you that there is more than one world in the Bible. So now the next question you have to ask yourself, what world is John chapter 3 verse 16 referring to? Since we know now that there are multiple worlds according to the Bible, we need to find out what it's talking about. And through process of elimination, right now we're going to find out that it cannot be talking about all the inhabitants or all the nations of the world. The proof? Right here. Romans chapter 9 verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. Who is Jacob? Jacob is the forefather of the nation of Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Israel begot 12 sons, which became the nation of Israel. So when God is saying, Jacob have I loved, he's saying the 12 tribes of Israel have I loved. Those are the ones that I love. But Esau have I hated. Esau is Jacob's brother. Esau became a nation known as the Edomites. So that same curse that fell upon Esau that God hated fell upon all his descendants, the Edomites. God says he hated the Edomites. Let's read it again. Romans chapter 9 verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. There's no way out of this. This tells you that the word world in John 3.16 cannot possibly be speaking about all the inhabitants of the world. It's just not possible because this would be a contradiction. You can't have it both ways. He can't say he hates one people on the earth and then say on another verse, he loves everybody in the world. That's a contradiction. The Bible doesn't contradict itself. Man contradicts the Bible. So now we're going to find out what world was it talking about? We're gonna, I'm going to give you the specific verse on what world he was referring to when he said, God so loved the world. Isaiah 45 verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded 
world without end. This is the world it was referring to in John chapter 3 verse 16. It was talking about the world of Israel, not the world of everyone in the entire uh, planet Earth. That's not what it was referring to. This is the, it's pretty much the exact quote that John 3.16 comes from, from Isaiah 45 and verse 17. That's where Christ was quoting it from. Uh, everlasting salvation and everlasting life in John 3.16. This is where he got it from. So it's not to be confused with God is talking about all the inhabitants of the earth. That does not match up with what the Bible says. John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So now we need to find out who did God give his son for? Who did God give Christ to be a savior for? Because it says that he gave his only begotten son. So now we need to go through the Bible and find out what it says. Acts chapter 13 verse 23. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior. Jesus. Now you're going to have to ex you're going to have to accept it or you're going to have to question what you believe in. The Bible clearly says that God gave his son for the nation of Israel. There's the ones who they're the only ones who needed a savior, not the entire planet earth. They needed a savior because they were given a certain law, the law the Israelites never kept. That's why we got in that's why we're in captivity today. We never kept the law. And Yahweh, who you call Jesus Christ, he's the one who needed to be a savior for the nation of Israel, for the laws that the nation of Israel never kept. So the Bible says he gave his son for Israel. This is clear and it's easy to be understood once you get your mind out of religion. John 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now this is what happens when a mind is stuck in religion. When it gets to the whosoever part, somebody whose mind is in religion, they'll skip everything else that we just went over and they'll go right to the whosoever and then they'll run with it and say, see, whosoever, this is talking about anybody who believeth in Christ can be saved, anybody. Even though we just went over that the Messiah came and the world that God was talking about in John 3, 16 was for Israel. But that's why the Bible tells you to read it precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little to get the correct understanding. The whosoever is easy to be understood. We're going to use common sense right now. A lot of people can't use that when it comes to the Bible, but we're going to use it right now and show you that this whosoever cannot be talking about every single person in the world. It's not talking about that. Here's the proof. Hebrews 12 and verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. My question now is, does the whosoever apply to Esau, the Edomites? The Bible says that God rejected Esau, which means his whole lineage got rejected and he found no place of repentance. No matter how many tears the nation of Edom drops, no matter how many hallelujahs they send up, no matter how many amens they throw up, they said there's no place of repentance for this nation of people. My question to you is does the whosoever apply to them? That's what you're going to have to, uh, to, to, to cope with. Does the whosoever in John 3.16 apply to the nation of Edom? Absolutely not. And I'm going to prove to you that the Bible scholars know the same exact thing. See, they're not the Bible scholars when they're sitting here breaking down the Bible the same way the Israelites do. They're not doing it from a religious perspective. They're not got, they don't have the influence of the Christian church in their ear determining what the Bible's saying. They're breaking it down just like they break down a Shakespeare or anything else. So they know exactly what the Bible is saying, but they're going to tell you in the Christian churches something totally different because it's meant to be deceptive. How do I know that the scholars know? Here's the proof. 
the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, Edom, the nation and its people who were the descendants of Esau. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. Now I'm gonna ask you one more time, is the whosoever in John 3, 16 talking about everyone? The Bible says that Esau has no place of repentance. Him and his descendants, the nation of Edom, they have no place of repentance. They were promised, they were the only people that was promised no mercy at all from God. Is the whosoever talking about them? Are they included in the whosoever? Absolutely not. So that tells you that the whosoever is not talking about every single body on the planet Earth. It's simply not saying that when it says whosoever. Whosoever is not an all-inclusive statement. Every time you say whosoever, it does not mean you're speaking about everybody in the world. An example, say you're a classroom teacher and you have a, um, a classroom of 30 students and you say, you give out a test and you say, Whoso, or you say whoever, because whoever and whosoever are the same exact thing. This whoever is the modern term for whosoever. You say, whoever finishes the test first can leave early. Does that mean you're talking to somebody in the classroom next door? Or somebody in a classroom in China? Or to somebody in a classroom in Russia? No, it's pertaining to the whosoever in that classroom, in that environment. That's who it's directed to. And it's the same thing in the Bible. The Bible's directed to the Israelites. So the whosoever in John 3, 16 is saying whosoever of Israel. I'm gonna show you right now that whosoever is not talking about everyone in the Bible. Exodus 12, verse 15. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. See, now you understand what the whosoever is talking about. Whosoever eateth bread, his soul shall be cut off from Israel. This is not speaking about every nation on the earth. Every nation on the earth can't get cut off from Israel. Israel is its own nation. It's talking about whosoever in Israel eats bread within that time frame, that soul is going to be cut off from the nation. Whosoever is not all inclusive. So when John 3 16 says, whosoever believeth in him, it's talking about whosoever of Israel believes in him. They're the ones that should not perish because they're the world that God was talking about. This is very simple. This is not complicated. That's why we're breaking it down to the very simplest level. Barney style, so people can get a correct understanding of what this John 3 16 is referring to. Now we're gonna go up two verses, which nobody ever reads. People just jump right to John 3.16. How about we start two verses up so we can get context? And without a shadow of a doubt, you will understand that this is not talking about every single person in the world. It's talking about the nation of Israel. All you gotta do is go two verses up and then read down in context and you'll see exactly what it's saying. John chapter three, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, Christ is given an analogy. He's saying the same way that the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness is the same way that I'm going to be lifted up. Now, in order to understand what he's saying, we gotta go back to the account in the wilderness and find out who the serpent was lifted up to and find out exactly what he, who he's going to be lifted up to. Because he's given a comparison. The same way it happened in the wilderness is the same way it's going to happen with me. Numbers 21 and verse five. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people 
and much people of Israel died. See, the Israelites were complaining after coming out of Egypt because it was rough in the wilderness. Didn't have the luxuries of eating bread whenever they wanted to, and it was rough. So they started complaining against Moses and against God, and the Most High sent fiery serpents to bite the Israelites and start putting them to death. This is referring to the Israelites, not all people, so keep that in mind. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live. See, it says everyone. That's the same exact word as whosoever. It says everyone that is bitten that looks upon this pole shall live. Now, the everyone, is that talking about somebody who was living in China at the time? Or was that talking about everyone of Israel? This is context, people. Context 101. Everyone of Israel who looked upon this serpent would live. He, he lifted it up and everyone who looked on it would live. They'd be revived from the poison that was inside of them. See, now this is the same exact uh, replication that Christ was saying that he was going to do. He says the same way that Moses lifted up the serpent to the people of Israel in the wilderness is the same way that I have to be lifted up to the people of Israel and die on the cross. It's the same exact thing. This is correct context in the Bible. It's not speaking about all people. It's not speaking about all people. That's simply just not what John 3.16 is speaking about. It cannot be talking about that because it would be contradicting the entire Bible. Revelations chapter 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. You have to ask yourself, why is it that somebody would lie about something as simple as the verse of John 3.16? This is the reason why. You always must remember this verse when you hear something contrary from what you've been taught for centuries or for decades. The traditions of men that has been passed on for centuries and decades. You have to remember that the prophecy says that Satan deceived the whole world. Now this world is talking about every inhabitant of the world because nobody knows who the real Jews are. Nobody knows that Christianity is a lie. Nobody knows about what is going on between in, in real secret societies. You got the 1% controlling the 99% of everything, of education, uh, the medical field, uh, of anything. You got the 1% that control all of it and they're going to push lies to you because the whole agenda is to have people mentally enslaved. That is the agenda. And Satan is behind all of that. And the number one thing is religion. So don't be surprised when you always find, when you're constantly finding out something has been lied, you've been lied to about something. Don't be surprised about that. Just remember, Satan. the prophecy says Satan would deceive the whole world. And that's just the way it is. So your job is to snap out of it and to wake up. Get your mind out of religion. Get your mind out of religion. That's, the, that's your job. Snap out of it. You've been hypnotized with the same stuff that's been pushed on you over and over and over. So when somebody comes and tells you the truth, it seems like that's a lie. Well, I've been taught this for so long. He's even though this brother's bringing out the truth, that's a lie. People don't want to hear that. People want, people are accustomed to hearing the same thing over and over, and then a lie becomes the truth. And that's exactly what happened to the verse of John 3:16. When you say a lie so many times, people keep reciting it, and now that's become the standard. That is the truth. That's become people's reality. A lie has become people's reality, and that's what has happened. That's why it's, it, it's astounding to see the correct breakdown of John 3.16. It's just so far-fetched and totally different than what you've used to been uh, hearing. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. 
fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. And if you didn't understand the John 3:16 deception lesson, your job is to keep God's commandments. And maybe one day he'll give you the understanding. But until then, you need to keep his commandments. Understanding John 3:16, that's not going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. But keeping God's commandments to the best of your ability, that's what's going to get you there. This is the soul-saving business. This ain't the entertainment business. This ain't the make you feel good business. This ain't the let's all get along and hold hands business. This is the soul-saving industry. So your job is to keep God's commandments. Let's find out what one of God's commandments are that you must keep in order for your soul to be saved. Leviticus 19 and verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. Do not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. What is that saying? Don't be putting on skinny jeans on your daughter with her butt showing all out. Don't be putting tight t-shirts where you have her breasts hanging all out. Don't be having her trying to look like Kim Kardashian. Don't be having her trying to look like the women on Atlanta Housewives. That's prostituting your daughter to cause her to be a whore. God says you're not supposed to be doing that. And the result of not listening to God today, what do you have? High HIV rates, STDs all over the place, women sleeping with a thousand men. This is what you have because people don't want to listen to this law. People want to teach that the laws are done away with. Why would this law be done away with? Why would God say it's okay now to prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore and to have her dressing filthy out there and vile? Why would God say that that law is done away with? For you people who think that the law is done away with. That's what you have to ask yourself. Most people never even heard any of the laws and they automatically jump to the laws are done away with. These laws are to save your life and to keep you in good health and good shape and in good uh, prosperity with the Most High. To not to hurt you. So you're not, to you're not to be prostituting your daughter and causing her to be a whore because the whole land will be full of wickedness. And as you see today in America, the whole land is full of wickedness. I'm Brother Yerushalam, and until next time, I say Shalom. Shalom, this is Brother Yerushalam asking the viewers to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share the videos so that the word can be spread throughout the four corners of the earth as prophesied. And with that, I say shalom and peace and blessings to the nation of Israel.